Sitting in Hackney in North London, where Jason was living with his sister, Hayley, last July. The flat where Jason stayed with his sister is boarded up now. The family has moved. Jason was brought up in Nuneaton and in East London with his three brothers and sister. When he was six, he was taken into care at a Dr Bernardo's home in Kent and lived there for four years. During that time, Jason got to know the south coast of England well. The children were often taken there on day trips. He went back to live with his mother in 1981, but left there in June last year to stay with his sister Hayley and her husband Adam at their flat in Hackney. Going down the market, Jason, do you want to come? Uh, no, I think I'll stay here. Are you sure? Yeah. You know, I'm really happy here. What are you going to be doing while I've gone? I'll just play Monopoly for a while. OK, then. See you later. Right. Bye. Bye. Before he left, Jason stole £75 in cash from his sister's bedroom. He took with him his clothes, a few books and his Monopoly set packed in plastic carrier bags. The door was sort of open, but we thought like, nothing of it. We thought he might have gone round to the shops or something and just forgot to shut the door. About 15 minutes later, we noticed the money had gone. And then. We noticed all the insides, the monopoly had gone, all the board and all the money in that had gone. That's when we realised he'd run away. That was on the 6th of July last year. The investigation into Jason's murder spans the six months up to the discovery of his body in November. Around the end of June or beginning of July, he visited a coin dealer in Charing Cross. Jason liked to collect foreign coins and had often called before, but this time he'd come to sell. Morning, Jason. I wonder if you've got to turn by these. Place them on the tray. A group like this, I would pay about five pounds for. That's great. OK. He was a very bright lad, uh, always very polite. Very single-minded about his collecting. I suspected really that he almost fantasised about going to the countries that the coins originated from and having small change in his pocket to be able to spend if and when he arrived there. We don't know where Jason went immediately after he disappeared, but three days later, on the 9th of July, he turned up on his own at the Silver Sands Caravan Park in Camber Sands, Sussex. Uh, Mrs Clark? Yes? The man on the gate sent me. Yeah. Can I stay in your van? How long for? Just two days. How many of you? Just me. Oh. Oh. Yeah, we'll see what we can do. Come on. This is the van. A nice, large van. So you're on your own, then? Yeah. Don't you ever come out with your parents? No, they let me travel on my own. It's like an adventure. I'm uh, supposed to be visiting a friend in Hastings. Oh, well, that's all in the same area. You're not far from there, you know. No. I thought you would have had a friend with you, to company to go about with. A friend? No, well, I had a friend stay with me once, and he stole money from me, so I don't trust anyone. He hadn't been here long when he came back with the key, and he said, I'm going for a swim. So he went for a swim, and when he came back, I suppose it could have been within the hour. I knew he'd been for a swim, cos all his hair was all wet. <laughs> and uh, then he went in, in, but I think he might have been down for fish and chips. The next day, he uh, went for a walk to Rye. He said he was going to Rye. I uh, didn't see much of him that day at all. I couldn't make out, really, how old he was. I thought, you know, 12 because he had two front teeth missing and he seemed such a young child. Very quiet, reserved in his way, I thought. Didn't seem to... Um, well, he wasn't a pushy boy. 
I rather took to him, really. Jason made contact with his family twice at the end of July. On the 22nd of July, he sent a postcard to his mother. The card, now marked by various forensic tests, had been posted on the south coast. Dear Mum, I'm OK and not to worry. I'm working with the fair at South End, so don't worry. See you soon. I'm going to the north soon. Jason Swift. In fact, police now know Jason wasn't with the fair at South End. Around the same time, Haley's husband, Adam, received a phone call. Hello? Uh, hello, Adam. Where are you? I'm staying with a friend from school and his father. Jason, where are you ringing from? I'm in South uh, London. What's the number? I'm, I'm not saying. You coming up? Yeah, I'm thinking of coming back. I don't know when. I'll, I'll phone tomorrow night and tell you. Right then. Bye. OK then, bye. Nothing was heard or seen of Jason at all during August. Then, on the 11th of September, his mother received a birthday card from him. It was probably posted in either Croydon or Crawley. Dear Mum, I haven't forgot you, so don't worry about me. I'm all right. I'll come and see you in the next few months. Happy birthday from Jason. Again, the trail goes cold for the rest of September and the whole of October. Then, on the 6th of November, a girl who knew Jason thinks she saw him on a 253 bus in North London. She travelled from Manor House, but can't remember where Jason got on. When she got off at Mayor Street, Hackney, Jason was still on the bus. About three weeks after that, Jason was murdered. He'd been drugged with tranquilizers and asphyxiated.